in this AQA micro video, let's spend a few minutes thinking about production possibility diagrams. Now, PPF, production possibility frontier, illustrates the maximum output of two goods or services that an economy can produce given its available factor resources and given the current state of technology. The PPF assumes, if we're on it, full utilisation of resources and a fixed level of technology. And as we'll see, it's really key to understanding concepts such as scarcity, trade-offs and opportunity cost. Well, scarcity, well, the PPF does indeed demonstrate the idea of scarcity, which refers to the limited available factor resources, such as labour, capital and land, relative to the unlimited and often growing wants and needs of a changing society. The PPF reflects the idea that if you make uh, more of one good or service, that might necessitate producing less of another, because you're making decisions about resource allocation. So the shape of the PPF highlights trade-offs that are required, inevitable, when reallocating resources between two goods. And we'll use it to show opportunity cost. The opportunity cost of producing more of one good or one service is the amount of the other good that must be given up, a sacrifice. The slope of the PPF represents the opportunity cost of switching or producing from one good to another. Points along the PPF, points that lie on the PPF and along it represent an efficient use of scarce resources. The economy is fully utilising all available factor inputs. Points inside the PPF are deemed to be inefficient, suggesting that there's some unemployment or underemployment or inefficient use of factor resources. Now, the PPF <coughs> can shift outwards or inwards based on the stock of resources available, the technological frontiers, improvements in factor productivity. And if the PPF shifts outwards, that indicates long-run economic growth. PPF diagram does make key assumptions, fixed resources, given level of technology, full resource utilisation. And of course, if you change those assumptions, you change the analysis. Let's think about simple PPF here, producing between wheat and beef. PPF shows the maximum possible output combinations. Uh, factor inputs can be used to use different products. So in this case, wheat and beef. Here's our initial PPF or PPC. And um, basically, it's the maximum of those two uh, products, wheat and beef, that you can produce when fully, uh, full resources, full utilization of resources, and efficient utilization of resources. Now, the PPI is often used to show the diminishing returns idea. So when scarce resources are reallocated away from wheat, let's say we start off at W1, B1, shown by point A, there's an opportunity cost. And that's shown by the gradient of the PPF curve. So as we, as we produce more beef, from B1 to B2, as we move from point A to B, we have to sacrifice some output of wheat. The opportunity cost is the lost output of wheat divided by the gained output of beef. W2, W1, divided by P, B2, B1. And you could always use it numerically. So, for example, it might be the case that it's producing an extra 10 units of beef. We have to sacrifice 60 units of wheat, giving an opportunity cost of 6. Now, because of diminishing returns, as we move down that curve from A to B, maybe to a point further along the curve, the opportunity cost of producing extra beef is going up. We're getting uh, a little extra beef, but we're having to sacrifice more wheat in exchange. So, for example, uh, the opportunity cost, of, opportunity cost of moving from B to point C, uh, well, we get five extra units of beef, but we have to sacrifice 70 units of wheat. That's an opportunity cost per extra unit of beef of uh, 14. Now, the same effect of increasing opportunity cost will be seen if we reallocate resources away from beef towards wheat because of the shape of the curve. The idea of this uh, nonlinear concave PPF is that resources such as land and capital and labour are not necessarily equally suited to producing wheat and beef. When will PPF shift outwards? Well, it'll shift outwards when there is an increase in a country's long-run productive or supply potential. And this outward shift does represent economic growth because the economy can now produce more of both goods and improve its production capabilities. 
So what can cause a shift in the PPF? First of all, more resources. It could be the case that our natural resource endowment increases. If a country discovers, for example, new oil or shale gas reserves, that means it can abuse its production capacity in the energy sector. There could be advances in the state of technology, allowing us to use more with the same resources or more with less resources. So technological progress at the cutting edge can drive higher productivity. Human capital really also quite important, the quality of the labour force. Better education, more skilled workers can improve factor productivity. And critically, we need an increase in the stock of resources through investment. So investment in physical capital, be it infrastructure, machinery, plants, technology can in increase the PPF. So for the PPF to shift outwards, there needs to be either an increase in the stock or supply of factor inputs or an improvement in efficiency. So here's a shift in the PPC from PPC1 to PPC2. And that allows us to increase the output of both wheat and beef. That's an increase in potential as well as actual output. And that is economic growth. And that would shift here, for example. Uh, there's been a means that you can now um, increase the output of wheat without having to sacrifice any output of beef. So we can go from point A to D on wheat output, but stick at point B of beef. Or... We can hold the output of wheat constant at A and move from B to E in terms of production of beef. So clearly a shift in the PPC represents and it improves the trade-offs, improves the opportunities for a country. In this situation, the productivity of beef production has gone up with all other factors held constant. So we can't produce any extra wheat, but we can now produce more beef. And here... Increased efficiency, maybe innovation, technological advance in the production of wheat means we can now produce more wheat, uh, but we're holding all the other factors constant, so we can't produce any extra beef. Here's a quick overview. You might want to take a, a, a screenshot of this, of the key causes of the shift outwards of the PPC. It's all about higher productivity, better management of inputs, increasing the supply of labour, the stock of capital, the impact of innovation and invention, and the discovery and then the exploitation and the extraction of new natural resources. Now, the PPF does come in handy when you talk about economic efficiency because it provides insights into how a country can achieve optimal production levels. So, for example, productive efficiency occurs when it comes to producing goods and services at the lowest possible cost. So, uh, productive efficiency is achieved when the economy is operating on the PPF because... We're maximising output with our given inputs. Of course, we're, if we're inside the PPF, that's underutilisation of resources. Allocative efficiency occurs when an economy is producing a mix of goods and services that best aligns with the preferences and social needs of people in the country. So on the PPF, um, the allocative efficiency is achieved when the economy is producing at a point that matches society's preferences. Now, if you're within the PPF, you're not allocatively efficient because you can produce more of one good without losing the production of the other. Um, but whether or not you're actually allocatively efficient on the PPF depends on what output combinations are chosen. A point outside the PPF is not feasible. Achieving such a point would require extra resources or technological advance. Dynamic efficiency. It's the ability to grow and expand production possibilities over time through innovation, technological change. Uh, and an outward shift does indicate a hint that dynamic efficiency has happened because you can now produce more with the same resources. For example, process innovation, lean manufacturing used in car making or uh, ag agrarian innovation in farming that increases the yields of particular crops each year. So here's a quick overview of the PPF diagram. Don't forget any point that lies within the curve, D and E, for example, here, are inefficient combinations. We're not utilising fully or efficiently our scarce factor inputs. Any point that lie on the curve, A, B and C, for example, represents points of productive efficiency. Uh, but F is a combination that's not yet attainable as it lies beyond the existing PPF. There we go. This was an AQA, AQA micro video on production possibility diagrams. And thanks for joining in.